Hey guys and welcome, we're here with another Take Command, episode 3 here, I'm using the players Partoof and Nostalgia Talix. Uh, this is going to be a PBZ between White Rot and Madalisk, originally played a Dreamhack. Now one thing that was asked earlier uh, was, you know, to summarize what happens in these games before we get too much into it. Now I do it the first time, and what I'm going to do is, while I slowly fast forward to it, <laughs> good luck, have fun with White Rot, uh, is... I'm trying to explain to you guys, for those who don't know, the original video of this, I'll probably overlay some video over top of the audio so you don't just see me fast forwarding very boringly. But uh, White Rod, this is the map that White Rod did carriers. Two base carrier rush versus Madalisk. And Madalisk had some very nice defense. She had Infestor, she had Spore Crawlers down, but it was just a little too, I think, weird more than anything else for her to appropriately deal with. And uh, while this was originally a best of three series, we will, of course, only be sticking in this singular game, as that is how this Take Command feature works. So I hope you guys will enjoy this, and we will see you in just a moment. Alright guys, here we go. Three, two, one. And we find ourselves in the early game of Madalisk vs. White Run. Now Partoof is, of course, reprising the role of White Run. Nostalgia Talix is going to play uh, Madalisk. Now, this is a pretty standard opener. For those who didn't catch this, this was kind of like, look, it's the Forge opener, it's the classic two base, very quick economy for a Protoss player. Madalisk responding, duly so with a third hatchery of her own. Not a bad choice. Now the biggest thing for these players is A, they don't actually know what replay they're in. They, they might have seen this game live at DreamHack when it was happening, but they might not actually recognize exactly what happens, because of course, as we all do, lots of StarCraft goes on, we watch a lot of these games, and sometimes forget, but some nice Queen Micro actually takes out that Zalot, only a Stalker left to deal with, but of course the Queen sadly won't be able to deal with it. It does drop a Creep to her before going down, and two Zerglings get here a little bit too late. Now Partoof is not going to follow the legacy of White Run. Now the time at which we chose to resume this replay was actually, guys, Five seconds before White Wild was going to place down his first Stargate, which would then send him on his way to having two carriers of production on the map at a time. So it says Partoof, our gold Protoss player. Oh, I should probably mention uh, Partoof is a gold player. I'm not sure if I mentioned that earlier. Nostalgia Talix is also a gold player. So right now, Partoof going for these gateways. Obviously doesn't remember this game or didn't see this game live or else maybe he would have continued White Rose footsteps because I'm not kidding when I say we started the replay five seconds before Stargate came down. Now the Nostalgia Talix as well, he's actually opened up quite, well I shouldn't say opened up, he's of course going off a of Madalisk's opening, uh, but he is following up with this quite nicely. He's got some Zerglings on the field, he's replacing the Queens that he lost, and looks like he wants to be a little bit aggressive, and I can't blame him for that, but there's of course this nice wall that's been set up, it's got the cannon, it's got the Zealot, oh no, Partoof actually moving it out of the position for just a second, will he get these Lings in? Partoof, you gotta reposition your Zealot, does go to auto attack, thank goodness, that could have been close. Now Talix unfortunately not going to be able to do too much with slow Zerglings. Checking the tech paths here, yeah, no metabolic boost just yet, sadly. But of course in a PvZ it's not that uncommon, especially when the Protoss opens Forge first, to uh, delay your speed. Metabolic boosts often not taken until the 9-10 minute mark, but Nostalgia Talus, perhaps not realizing that's not a tech path available to him, is just skipping right onto Roaches. Now this isn't a bad choice by any means for a Zerg player, but I think it's pretty safe to say, at some point in the game, you're going to have to buckle down and get that metabolic boost. Now this third base has been saved. It's Actually, gonna start mining here very quickly. We got a lot of drones starting to transfer over. We got Queen spreading creep. Nostalgia Talix handling this situation quite nicely. Partoof, however, is sitting at home. He's going for that tried and true Protoss strategy. We got the Robo facility coming up. We will most likely see him go to some Colossus production after this, but for the time being, he's got enough gateways to defend himself. But I mean, really, you can only play defense so long as a Protoss player. You don't want your Zerg opponent to snowball out of control. You gotta get in there, poke a bit, and do some damage. Because, of course, with the Mothership Core, you can always recall if the damage you do isn't enough. But do we actually have... We do have a Mothership Core on the field. Where is this sucker? Up here in the top no noon o'clock position. Northern part of the map. I was gonna say a mix of both. noon -der. Inventing new words every day with Rifkin. Now these Zealots do shred the Zerglings out the side of the base. Of course, they are still slow, so they can't really run away in time. Lots of cannons coming down here. Partoof, perhaps a little paranoid, is our gold player. Investing a lot in defense, very static defenses. And this Mothership Core, unfortunately, where it is right now, is just absolutely stranded. We got so many Queens coming out of Talix and a lot of Roaches to boot. And this Mothership Core needs to either be at home. Actually, oh, he recalled it. Very nicely done there, Partoof. Either needs, I was going to say, though, it needs to have it at home for that Photon Overcharge or something, but... Yeah, it's got such low health, it's going to fall very quickly. Luckily, though, of course, Queens won't be trudging along the map anytime soon. 
Now, Pardoof actually actively scouting with this observer. Gonna come in, see what's going on. Sees a lot of roaches popping out, and has gotta know now for sure, like, okay, I'm gonna have to deal with these roaches. And already has immortals on the field, producing more. I like this choice. This is a just a great way to open as a Protoss player. Any league, any level, gateway units plus immortals are a pretty good mix. Now, the only thing I would criticize here for our Protoss player, Partouf, is he really needs a couple centuries to go hand in hand with this. They do complement immortals quite nicely, and. I mean, it's not exactly white run playing. <laughs> now, uh, the Templar Archives is completing up. And this is such a weird difference to the game. You see, now, if you guys saw the game live, you'll know why I'm so flabbergasted. Because it was at this point, pretty much, Madalisk was on the verge of GGing. Not quite out of the game yet, but already have to deal with four, six carriers at this point in the game. But this time, we don't see a single air unit on the field for our Protoss player. Which kind of gives Madalisk, aka Talix, a little bit of a better chance to actually win this game. Now, he is just massing up on Roaches, and he's got this massive bank. I'm oh, sorry, that's part two for the bank, my mistake. I'm not used to using the uh, default UI. <laughs> Forsooth. But uh, you can't unfortunately use the custom UIs in the take command feature. You're actually disabled from doing it. It kind of sucks. But looks like these roaches are going to push. They do have roach speed. They don't have any actual tech upgrades. This part two. Part two does have the plus two weapon damage, plus three on the way. Dewey White Rob proud here with this tech, but these roaches. Might just be a little bit too numerous. No Photon Overcharge on this Nexus. Where's that Mothership Core? The cannons are being focused down here by these Roaches. The Immortal, unfortunately, on the front lines also falls very quickly. And Talix has forced Partouf to go offensive with this massive amount of Zelts. He really should have had those at home, but this third base, finally getting that Overcharge off. It might be a, too, a little bit too late, though. There's just so many Roaches standing here, swarming in just as Zerg do. Now, Talix will absolutely take the space down. Will Part 2 retreat his probes? That's the big question. No, they do start retreating, but maybe perhaps a little bit too late. A lot of damage getting done here. And these Zealots are trying to chase the Queens, but I mean, Zealots are melee units. They can't really chase too effectively. Talix, though, looking to be a little satisfied with the damage he caused, is actually going to back off and come home, try to defend these Zealots off. And the reality is, if he cleans these up, this pretty much sets him so good for the rest of the game. Now, there are two Immortals worth of production coming out at a time. They will handle these roaches quite nicely, but just Zealots, just Stalkers peppered in with these Zealots, or sorry, with these uh, Immortals is not going to be enough. As I said earlier, Partouf, if you're listening to this VOD, man, you got to pair up some sentries. Those force fields are so great at cutting up and dealing with large roach numbers, especially on Star Station. There's lots of wide engagement paths. So you got to limit the area that your opponent can engage you. Now, we do have the Extended Thermal Lens coming up behind this. I do like that choice. Planning ahead for the Colossus switch later on, but... I mean, once he's got about five Immortals on the field, that's all he's really going to need if he can pair these up with units to actually take on these Roaches. And of course, I am harping a lot on the Sentry usage, but if you don't have Sentries, a lot of Zealots is not a bad second choice. It's like, again, they're just there to soak the damage to prevent the Roaches from A, moving and stutter stepping right directly on top of your Immortals. Now, Partouf, oh, his army is so exposed. And guys, we're going to see what is only best described as a massacre in a second. These Roaches are, of course, being killed very, very quickly. And actually, these Immortals are handling themselves quite nicely, but there we go, that's what I was talking about. Just moving into the Immortals, reducing any chance of them getting tanks uh, through form of Zealots, or however you want to phrase that. And unfortunately, with this last Immortal, actually two more coming down the ramp just in time, but still, the problem is the numbers. There's just too many Roaches here, and Talix going to just powerhouse through this. I mean, some of these Roaches aren't even active, but that's okay, he doesn't need them to be. Even if he loses all these Roaches, he's causing a lot of damage to our Protoss player. Now, Partouf, I will tell you guys right now, I do always tell players who they will be playing, what game they'll be playing, so I'll be like, look, you're going to be playing Madalisk versus White Rod, you know, Talix, you'll be Madalisk, Partouf, you'll be White Rod, before we get into the game, and I'll tell you, Partouf, I don't know if he's just a big fanboy or if he loves his Protoss, but he was really nervous knowing, like, oh gosh, it's going to be White Rod, I can never live up to him, but guys, if you're watching this video and you ever want to participate in this, the point isn't to live up to these pros, we're just seeing how you handle them differently, how you go about these situations, you know, would the pro make a Nidus or would you make a Nidus, that sort of mentality question. Sometimes you will be dropped in unwinnable situations, sometimes you'll be dropped in pretty even situations. I do always try to make it very interesting uh, and I try to pick very notable points during these replays in which to resume. Now, this is a best of three as well for those unfamiliar with the format. So if Partouf loses, if Talix loses, it's not that big of a deal. They've got a game to come back on. It will of course be the same map but at a different time. I will, in future casts, start using different maps. So if it's a best of three in real life, we will use the three maps that the players used in real time. But for the time being, uh, while I try and flush out the format and how I want to handle these events, uh, these little broadcasts, if you will, I will stick to just sticking to the one replay for the time being. There's so many cool possibilities with the Take Command feature, though. I'm not scared of uh, ever running out of options anytime soon now. 
Unfortunately, BCL is going to try and do what they can, and my small talk finally goes to an end as a halt as we have some action going on. These roaches moving right on top of the Colossus. Partoof going to go for the high ground. A really smart choice, actually, but unfortunately, he's not quite there. He's got to back up just a little bit more. The Immortal shredding the Colossus coming from behind. He's actually going to take on this fight, but it's the reinforcing wave of Mutalus. He has nothing to deal with. There are no stalkers with this army. Can he recall? No, no energy for a recall. Burned on that time warp. And these Mutalisks are not doing anything, I say with a question mark, as they, there we go, start to focus down the Colossus, but a really nice choice coming out of Talix there. Mutalisks, of course, very good against pretty much everything the Protoss have, if there are no Archons on the field, but Partouf, he's got these Templar, he's got Storm researched, he doesn't have the energy for it, but of course, Mutalisks clump up a lot, and if you can land a Storm on top of a flock of Mutalisks, you're going to be in a really good spot, but alright, Mutalisks coming in to engage the Stalkers, the Stalkers actually holding their own pretty nicely. Again, just buying time for these Templar to get those storms available. Because, of course, it's kind of that one-two punch combo where you storm the turn into an Archon, and you're just as deadly for these Mutalisks as ever. But flooding Mutalisks and Lings alone will not work. Both of these players kind of go for what I call it best described as Nexus Wars uh, strategies here, where one player just gets what, something that counters the other, and they'll keep swapping techs back and forth, trading throughout the middle of the map, and eventually, though, one will finally power through the other. But Partouf now taking a fourth base, Talix also taking a fifth base, actually establishing his fifth base, going to start mining off this. Let's check the worker count. Because again, damn this default UI doesn't have any of the features our beautiful custom one does. 75 workers, 263, not too shabby. Lots of links this time, they have speed coming across the field. And Partouf's going to be forced to cancel this Nexus. However, he might not be paying attention as he is on the offensive himself. This Nexus should absolutely fall. The Queen goes down oh so quickly. And this hatchery is not looking to be in a good way, but he's unfortunately shooting the eggs. The downside of a move is it does shoot whatever they sees first. Priority targeting is a whole nother can of worms, but Zerglings are going to try and get around here. These Stalkers and these Templar, oh no, the Templar are exposed, he just threw down a couple storms, lands them on top of the Mutalisks, but the Mutalisks, of course, they are still lickety split, they do fly out of them immediately. We don't have Blink on these Stalkers, we do have Blink on these Stalkers, pardon me, but no Archons getting warped in there, Partouf taking the base down, but losing his army in the process, some pretty nice Blink micro, I have to say, Arthur would be proud, perhaps that's the player I should have put Partouf in the shoes of. I may have to consider that for future casts if Partouf ever wants to do this again, because of course Blink Micro is a beautiful thing to see at any league, any level, gold, platinum, bronze, grandmasters, if you can Blink Micro it's always a good time, not just for you as a player, but for the casters, for the viewers. Now Partouf is continuing to pretty much just max out on Stalker, seems like he has started to kind of give up with his Robo Slow Tech technology, kind of realizing it's not going to work against these mass links, but oh dear, there are no cannons, there are no zealots, there's a couple Stalkers spread out, but... There's a lot of Zerglings here, and these Roaches as well. He's going to have to do the blinks of his life if he wants to hold onto this base, but not before losing his entire mineral line. Talix just absolutely gunning the probes there. 27 workers killed at this point in Partouf. There we go, that sexy Blink Micro. He is going to keep these Stalkers alive, and if you can regenerate the shields, then they're still going to live to see another day, but Talix throwing away a lot of resources to not knock down that Nexus. Although it's not to be upstaged by the fact that he did pick off a significant amount of probes in that small tango. But the really scary thing for this is, guys, when we drop these players off in these games, the macro has been set up for them. The two bases are established. The three hatcheries are on the field. From that point on, it's not a matter of your openings and worrying about harassment. It's just playing the macro game and figuring out how you can field your units. And right now, Partouf and Talix have actually been trading pretty nicely back and forth. But Partouf never really able to get that supply lead that he desperately needs to just kind of power through and end this game. Now, checking the actual tech at the time being, it's actually plus three weapons. He's significantly ahead in upgrades. He's even got the plasma shields. Not something you see too often. Storms, of course, available, but no Templar on the field. And Talix continuing to just pump out Mutalisks. And what can Partouf even do? I mean, the Mutalisks right now can't contend with the Stalkers, but a lot of these Stalkers, you gotta remember, are weak. So the numbers are very deceptive. And if these Mutalisks can just ball up, no storms go off. Those Templar are picked up immediately. And these, oh my goodness, the Stalkers are taking so much damage. The Roaches combined with the Mutalists. Some great Blink Micro coming out of Part 2, but going to just lose his army once again. And the supply dwindling now. 67 and going down. 61 after it's all said and done to the 149. GG is called. And Part 2, going to go down this first game. Hell is raining down upon you, Matalisk. <laughs> Are you prepared? You are.
are not prepared. <laughs> All right, guys, here we go. We're going to get into the second one. Three, two, one. All right, to assess the situation, we're a little bit further in the, the original game this time. White Rat had chosen to go for carries as stated previous. This time, he already has four on the field, as well as a ninja base here in the south. And Talix, oh, what a cheater. He totally was supposed to keep an eye off things, but going to run his circles into that lower right base. However, going to lose his own base in the process. Part 2 doing a lot of damage. A nice time warp to help catch these drones. I like that choice. However, he's got to pay attention down here to the lower right. Unfortunately, going to be punished with a lot of zerglings. Part 2, though... He really, the big thing for White Run in this game was he needed this base to sustain his army of Colossus. Sorry, not Colossus, but Carriers. So not used to saying Carriers, because when is that ever used in a game? But actually, Part 2, I'm a little shocked at his choice here. He's going to recall to save a dying Nexus and lose his advantage on the front. However, that's okay. He's got two Stargates worth of production, but Madalisk, a.k.a. Talix, has a lot of Infestors on the way. We check the tech. Pathogen Glands has already been completed, but so has the Graviton Catapult. So both players with a lot of tech under their belts. Now, White Raw, a.k.a. Partoof, unfortunately, did lose this base, and that's going to be a huge drawback, but he's got four carriers on the field. If he's smart and he plays his cards right, he can still move forward, but a big problem is these Zerglings are very pl problematic. Well, <laughs> sorry, I can't speak apparently. I'm so excited to see the way this goes. These carriers, of course, they're great at dealing lots of damage and dishing out tons of uh, damage to bigger, heavier units, but lots of Zerglings swarming underneath. Yeah, the Interceptors can try and deal with them, but it's not a fun situation. And part two, if I want to point out, not building more Interceptors. This could really hurt his DPS, but guys, outside the base, he's got to prepare. A lot of infestors means a lot of infested terrans. No fungals necessary because there's not a lot of ground troops. And can Partouf land that force field? He's got to do it. A decent force field to say the least. Now he's got no gateways to warp in. He's got four gateways, six potentially, but the rest are not made into warp gates. He's going to hold with these zealots as best he can, but these infestors, oh man, they are moving into nothing. They're throwing down a fungal doing what they can. But the, oh, carriers across the other side of the map are not being utilized. Now Partouf say, you know what? I don't want to go with carriers. I want to try out these Tempests. See how those work out. Could be a good choice, could be a bad choice. We'll have to wait and see, but these Zerglings are doing so much damage in the natural. They finally broke this wall, but I think Talix is perhaps a little distracted by the onslaught. And Partouf going to recall once again. I can't say that I agree with his choice to do this, but it's not a bad one. He wants to keep his base alive. He knows he can't afford to lose this, but he's caused a lot of damage. A lot of work has been killed for both players, actually, and these infested Terrans are about to pop. These carriers might be in some danger if he doesn't retreat them. The first carrier getting focused down. Oh, part two, these are such expensive units, but luckily just barely stays alive. As, of course, the Interceptors are great at dealing a ton of DPS rather quickly. Now, this is a situation where Partouf wants to just aim up it. Nostalgia Talix, relentlessly sending more Zerglings across the field. Finally, have the extra Interceptor production underway, but these Zerglings, ah, they don't quite have the crack upgrade, I believe. No Hive attack, but they should still get this Nexus. And if they don't, it's going to be ever so close. No, the Nexus does fall, but at this point, I kind of feel if Partouf just moves across the field with all White Rat currently has, he will be A-OK, -okay, because his opponent is also stuck on two bases. And he's established this lower right base, but he's not mining from it. He doesn't have any sneaky shenanigans going on. And Partouf is a little distracted with Larva for the time being, folks. Now, his question... I really question his choice to idly buy like this. The Tempest, now, to explain for those of you why I disagree with the choice of Tempest, Tempests are absolutely stellar when you're dealing with units from afar. If you want to outrange Fungals, not deal with Corruptors, or just massively three-shot Broodlords... But yeah, need the carriers to deal with these ground swells of units. And once Hydralis come on the field, we've got 13 on the way. If focused down, the carriers go down very quickly. The Interceptors, of course, can compete with the damage, but we'll have to see. Zerglings are going to come back and check, like, hey, I didn't finish off that gateway. Maybe he rebuilt the base, and it's a good thing he's checking, because Partouf absolutely rebuilt this base. Now, unfortunately, he's got to work with more units. There we go. Four more Zealots should be able to hold this. Five Zealots, six Zealots even, should absolutely be able to hold this. I would love for him to move across the field with these carriers, though. I understand his thought process, his choice to sit at home. He's just lost his natural. It's a dangerous place to be. Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun and games. Da -da 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 -da. No, there's going to be like so many uh, hate comments if I start singing, so I'm going to just pause the phone on that. But these carriers, I'm really not sure what Part 2's thought process is right now. He's got this base, he's got more than enough zealots to defend it, and this is that situation that every player, whether you're bronze or grandmasters, we've seen it live in like, you know, big ass casts, we see it on the amateur level as well. Sitting back and letting your opponent recuperate is the worst thing you can do when you're ahead. 
Now, unfortunately, Part 2 has already done this, so I can't say, like, A moving now would win him the game or anything, but we got a lot of Hydralisks on the field. Unfortunately, there are no more Infestors. A Fungal to hold uh, in, sorry, the Carriers in place while the Hydralisks move underneath it would be a great asset to this army, but you know what? Trading out those e couple extra Infestors for a lot of extra Hydralisks might just pay off as well. These are one of the few units in the game that can actually damage down the Interceptors before the Interceptors damage down the majority of the army. And if Part 2 finds himself without any fuel for these carriers, these become floating sky barges of uselessness. Now he's going to scout for Talix's own ninja base, but there is none to be had. But these Hydra are going to move in here. The carriers have to be so careful, getting focused down so quickly. Going to pull a Terran tactic here and actually move to the high ground. It's almost like dropping and picking up. And I like that he's chosen to try and do this, but these interceptors, of course, very, very susceptible to Hydra's damage. Now Talex kind of recognizes, like, hey, you know what? I can't take this fight right now. I will go offensive. Not a bad choice whatsoever. This a single Swarmer and a couple Queens. Partouf needs to just focus fire down, and I think he'll be all right. Three, uh, you know, a couple handful of leaves, but we still got a wow. Actually, Partouf placing down a lot of cannons at home, but no full wall off. The Zerglings can just try and run past, but of course the Hydras cannot. But you know what? Partouf might just have a little too much. Really nicely taking on the role of White Ryan, continuing to actually somehow manage to do so much damage with these the world's most passive carriers guys these carriers have spent a lot more time inactive this map than they spent active but it's okay because these uh these couple hydros they're dangerous right now but a photon overcharge a small warp in three zealots at the top of the ramp he's not going to lose the game or anything but part two does have to be a little more careful with his carriers on the offensive this one carrier actually without any fuel to attack with as the sport car is focusing down the interceptors and oh my god he's actually a little bit too close to the ledge now carriers are going to get focused up by the hydras he's moving but might it be too late no wow the carrier does somehow manage to live abusing the range of the tempest abusing the range of the carriers very nicely done but talix with these four hydralisks okay two tempest pop they should finally be able to clean this up but what's great behind this is he's finally mining off this base. It's active. It's got workers going on it. He needs to continue pumping out probes because he doesn't have a massive bank and he's throwing away a lot of his carriers, which is a lot of a lot of resources invested that he just can't afford to lose like this. Now, I do like that he's got these zealots here. I don't think they've been intentionally idle up here, but it does, of course, secure the fact that there is no extra base going on. He knows his opponent's stuck on two bases. Of course, he scouted this one and he killed the fourth. Now, reassessing what's going on, let's take a look at the resources lost. Actually, not too different. I must say I'm a little shocked at that. I thought it would have been significantly worse for Mr. Partouf here as he's losing those big, expensive units. But the really scary thing here for Talix is while these Hydralisks are unupgraded, Hydralisks are not really rivaled by much. There's no real clear counter to Hydralisks other than just trying to outnumber them with units. I mean, you can get Storms, you can get Archons, you can try and throw down a lot on the field, but Storms are so far off, and unless Partouf warps in a ton of Stalkers... With some massive blink micro combined with zealots and this small air army he has remaining, I don't think he's going to be able to take this fight. And I was absolutely fighting off a burp slash hiccup. Sorry for that, that's why I sounded like I was talking like a big old weirdo. But Zerglings are going to come in here and once again find themselves happily gutting the mineral line of Part 2. Going to go for that wall off, but of course a wall off versus Hydralis doesn't really matter. And these Templar are not Archons. What is he doing? No Storm is going to be available by the time this is ready to go. There we go. They do finally start to morph in. But it's not going to matter. Look how fast they're going down. The Hydras just powering through here in Part 2. Oh my goodness, I can't get over it. If he had just sent his carriers out earlier, going to lose everything here. Yeah, GG is called victory gonna go to nostalgia talix well played sir all right hey guys this is rifkin i'm here with our two participants today nostalgia talix and partouf guys say hello hello all right now that was uh <laughs> first off talix i gotta ask be honest yeah. with this were you cheating there in that last game uh had you, sent, cheat? you blindly sent the zerglings to the lower right corner of the map right at the start oh of course I did. I wanted to win, man. That's <laughs> no. the there. <laughs> wow, this guy. No, I can't blame you, though. We did kind of give Partouf a bit of an edge. But, guys, all right, take command. It's a weird feature. I don't know if you've utilized it before. Uh, we'll have Talos go first on Partouf. What were your feelings on that weird series? Um, well, everyone knows White Ra's known for his special tactics. I didn't actually, the entire game, I looked at my base, but I was aware of the minimap. That's why I knew it was there. So I literally didn't look until like both times the game had started. Um, all I knew was in the first game, he went for a Fast Forge Expand, and I was going three base. So I was like, okay, well, 
I'm a, I'm a fan of the classics, so I was going to go for like the Stefano <laughs> All Roach build yeah, on free that. base. Yeah, I, I like that build, and then I started seeing, oh, he's actually got big units, so I transitioned over to Mutalisk after I realized all of my queens had somehow died. I didn't know how, but so I had no larva. But other than that, yeah, that was my thoughts on the first game. And then the second game, I was like, I have a carrier at my third, and I, <laughs> hmm, I'm going to make... Uh, I don't know, Investor. So I just went with Investor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just kind of dropped you right into the thick of it. Part two. Yeah, exactly. You got, you had to step into the shoes of White Rod. Those are massive shoes to fill. Your body couldn't fill those shoes. <laughs> I mean, even on the best days. So I mean, like, how did you feel? Was it, was that a factor when you were playing, knowing that you were doing what, like, you had White Rod basically set the game up for you, walk away and say, here's the keyboard? Well, it, it, it's one thing just w watching the games and uh, actually playing it. Because I was like, we were um, b before the the star gates were, were down. So I was like, there were two bases, and I, at one point I had so much money, and I was like, why can't I spend this? And I found out there were only two star gate, uh, two gateways. So I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I wasn't really prepared. I, I didn't know what to do. So. <laughs> Well, special tactics are special tactics for a reason. You're not meant to know what to do, and neither's the enemy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, I mean, do you guys have any, uh, I, I don't know, shout outs or anything to your Twitters or teams or anything like that before we uh, take this off? Uh, sure. You guys can follow me on Twitter at NostalgiaTalix or twitch.tv forward slash NostalgiaTalix or just ask the handsome Rifkin over here. He knows where to find me. And uh, well, also, shout out to Rifkin because why not? Woo! Because I love the guy. I love the guy. We we we're same Z birthday guys. Same, same Z. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you miss, Pertuf? Yeah, uh, well, um, uh, I'm just at Pertuf. That's it. Oh, okay. So not fun. <laughs> no, no shout out to your brony pals or anything like that. Come on, man. Shout out the cheese. So this is Scarlet Fang Club. Yay. Okay, that's, that's a good Scarlet. fucking shout out. Scarlet there you Fang go. Club. Hell yeah. Guys, I will put, of course, all of the information in the description in the video down below if you want to contact these guys. Let them know, hey, that was a really fun game. You lived up to Madeline's standards. You didn't live up to White Rise. Whoever you <laughs> want to chastise or compliment, <laughs> you guys can always hit them up on Twitter. But thanks again, you guys, for participating. This has been a fun episode three of Take Command. Have a good, uh, I guess, uh, have a good day, everybody. See ya. Thanks. Bye.